Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this the local review body of October the 15th. My name is Councillor Henry Anderson, and I will be, uh, I am the convener of the local review body. On my left is uh, Councillor James, and on my right is Councillor McCall. Uh, on the far right is planning advisor to the LRB, who is not part of the planning development and has no previous involvement in any of the applications that you will have today is Mr. Harrison. Uh, on the left of uh, Councillor James is our legal advisor, Mr. Fogg, and on the far left is uh, Mr. Williams from Committee Services. Uh, before we commence the business of the day, can I inform you all that today's meeting will be recorded and will be available on the Council's website. Now, also, the House rules are that all electronic devices be either switched off or in silent mode. Um, we have no fire drills scheduled for today, so if the alarm sounds, please make your way to the nearest uh, exits out of the building. Um, now, uh, can I ask uh, other members if there's any declarations of interest in today's proceedings? Right, thank you. And uh, can, we can't uh, note the minutes of the previous meeting as none of the members here were at that meeting. Just, just noted, they can't be approved. Thank you for that uh, clarity. Um, thank you for that clarity. Um, now uh, we will uh, move on to the matters um, uh, of, uh, of the business of today. And we have only uh, one uh, item to uh, uh, look at, and it is uh, the erection of a boathouse holiday accommodation unit in Chetty at 200 metres north of Rock House, Anachinch, I think that's the correct. Eh? Anine, Achine, thank you. Acharn. And uh, <laughs> I take it uh, you are either the. Right. If, if you want to come further forward, or if you're quite happy sitting there, uh, as I say, it's, it's only the one. Um, the microphones work well. I, I've got a good voice, so that, that, that is uh, that is it. So I'll hand over to Mr. Harrison, who will um, uh, give us the presentation on this matter. Uh, <coughs> thank you, convener. I hope you can hear me <coughs> as well, because I'm afraid I'm struggling a bit with the cold. Um, as you say, Convener, it's a detailed planning application for the erection of a boathouse holiday accommodation unit and jetty at land 200 metres north of Rock House, Acharn. The proposed lodge is positioned on the shoreline of Loch Tay. There are three other similarly designed lodges at this location. Access would be gained via a shared private access from the public road, which currently serves the existing boathouses. The building would be of a contemporary design on stilts projecting over and above the shoreline. The walls would be of a painted timber cladding and the pitched roof would be a galvanised corrugated tin sheeting material. The proposed timber jetty would be linked to the building by a flight of steps. And I'll just take you through some photographs just to familiarise yourself a little bit with the site, but you might like to have pages 19 onwards, which would provide you with the location plan and the site plan, and of course details of the building itself. The general sequence of the photographs will be the existing development at Rock House, the access, the existing boathouse units, the site and wooded shoreline, and the site as seen from the opposite shore. So I say, just to familiarise familiarize yourself with the locality, uh, this is Rock House, and then associated with that, we have uh, Sky Cottage and Waterfall Cottage. And of course, you'll be aware that historically uh, and currently, these are linked to the management of the boathouses as well, and prospectively, this development. Stepping back a little bit from that, this is us now at the entry from the public road uh, down into the site. Obviously, the public road is set at quite a considerably higher level than the application site, as you're probably aware. But as you can see, maybe just pick out there the roof of uh, Rock House in the far distance. So this is us looking generally up the road. So if we go up the road and look back down, as it were, uh, 
we see the access from the other direction and you can see some of the woodland uh, close to the public road there as well. So moving on from that, at the access itself, you can see the first area is uh, tarmacked as it were, and then we move to this private shared access down to the existing uh, boat houses and the application site. And this maybe gives you a little bit of an indication of the difference in levels between where we are and the lock shore itself, because you can just make out the water in that photograph. So moving, as it were, on down the track from there, uh, this is, as say, part way down the track, uh, and we're looking down again right to Loch Tay in the far distance, but uh, the property described as the tractor shed unit uh, is in this photograph. Uh, so we go down a little bit further to that holiday accommodation unit. Uh, <coughs> I, I mention this uh, solely because it's not included in the list of applications recently relating to the, the total application site. This is, of course, set quite a bit above the loch still, uh, but uh, just to draw your attention to that unit as a fourth unit within the overall development. Moving round from that photograph uh, from a similar position on the access track, this is now, now looking down to the loch shore and uh, the, 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 the property, as it were, the, the boathouse known as Oyster, as I understand it, uh, in this photograph. So we go on, as it were, down the track further from that to that unit uh, this is us down, as you can see, at the level of the loch. Uh, so this is the oyster unit. And uh, obviously the design before you today is of a similar nature. So we can move from there down to the shore itself, uh, just to give you an indication of how that particular unit is uh, on stilts on the shoreline. Moving on from there, uh, I'll show you say around, first of all, there's a, a mention of a jetty in the current proposal. Uh, the jetty in the current proposal is a timber structure, uh, both in this and some of the other units. They have jetties, uh, but they're basically of a rock nature. Moving on from that, we go onto the track, which serves the, the application site uh, on just running, shall we say, to the, the rear of the, uh, the woodland on the loch shore. This is us looking down the track to Oyster Cottage, which we were at previously. So this is some of the shoreline trees here. And if we step back again a little bit further from that, uh, back further towards the west, as it were, on that track, we're now picking up the area uh, which would be part of the application site proper. And you can maybe just in a very indistinct way make out the sort of the access, as it were, down towards where the unit would be. Uh, you may have noticed on the plan, the site plan, that is, there's a sort of a, a, a slight loop uh, envisaged for access to the site. So the, the, the track, as it were, serving that particular unit uh, would be from this sort of position down towards the loch shore. So moving uh, immediately opposite where the unit is envisaged, as it were, uh, this is the application site itself, looking obviously towards the loch, then again, looking towards the lock as well, uh, there's a step and we levels a little bit with a, <coughs> a stone wall going from more the access road level more down towards the shoreline as well. So this is us just as, as it were at the top of that. The land drops away a little bit more than would maybe be suggested by the, the photograph here because of it being obscured by the, the bracken you see in the foreground. But we move from there down to the actual shore itself. Uh, where, the, shall we say, the water meets the land, uh, and this is the, where the, the shoreline is. And then from there, uh, just to give you an indication of the, the, the openness, if you stand on the shore, this is looking in the westerly direction, and then swinging around to the right of that, if we look directly across the loch from the actual shoreline, the opposite side, and then swinging around again to the right of that, we look in an easterly direction, as it were, back down towards Kenmore. So moving on from that, again, a, num a sequence of photographs now of the site itself. So this is the shoreline, and then moving to the left of this photograph, and one, the photographs will generally move towards the left, uh, we see the difference in levels I mentioned before from the level where the, the wall and the bracken is, sloping down to the loch shore, and then moving round to the left again of that. Uh, we see, again, the bracken and uh, some of the, the, the major trees, within the general locality. 
and then moving up a little bit from that, um, we get a detail of two of the trees referred to on the in the plan. And then <coughs> uh, this, the wall that I mentioned is to some extent buried in, in the bracken there as well. So moving up a little bit from that, we have a little bit more detail of a wall and uh, a copper stool uh, of uh, some, I think it's hazel probably, uh, at that particular point. Uh, there's also one or two other uh, trees that have been removed within the application site at some point. Uh, it appears to be relatively recently. Uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, an ash and that's possibly another ash as well. Um, moving on from that, we then have the access track which we were looking down from before. This is looking out back up to the main access. Uh, this would be the entry to the, the back of the proposed unit. And moving on from that, this is a, some, an example of some more long-term pass felling uh, within the application site. Uh, and then we have uh, examples of the other units. We saw Oyster in the first photograph, uh, and that, as I say, is towards the eastern end of the site. Then we have the two other units more towards the western end of the, the shoreline there. So this is the Dipper unit. And then we have the Osprey unit. As you can see, they've all been placed on stilts to greater or lesser extent on that shoreline. Uh, and just to confirm, as I mentioned earlier, the, most of the units, so the other three units, are served by as effe effectively stone jetties. So just to give you a little bit of an impression of the site relative to the two other units, so you're looking in that easterly direction, actually from that jetty, uh, we have the, the site indicated in general terms there, and the two other units that you can see. So moving on from there to the far shore, as it were, looking back, you can pick out the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, pick out the, the units on the shoreline, uh, and also I think it's uh, rock, uh, uh, cottage, rock house, I should say, uh, at the more elevated position there, and the position of the site in that, as it were, gap, as it were, and just to be a little bit clearer about this, but this uh, photograph is deliberately foreshortened, so please be aware of that when you look at it. Uh, this gives you a little bit more of an indication of the position of the site relative to the other units. So I'll just leave you with that general photograph. Turning first of all in summary to the applicant's case, the flooding objection from SEPA constitutes the sole reason for refusal. Scottish planning policy guidance is not definitive as it refers to structures such as stilts as being unlikely to be acceptable. SEPA's assessment of the Scottish planning policy to object to any development on stilts within a floodplain is seen as an inappropriate interpretation of that policy. The proposed finished floor level of 110.3 metres AOD was accepted by SEPA in relation to the earlier development and the guidance has not changed since that time. Occupants would be able to exit the building onto safe ground to the south from that level. The SEPA flood maps are indicative and strategic and no site visit has been carried out by that authority. The Council's flooding section does not object to the proposal and it is recognised that very limited physical development would take place within the floodplain. The existing development is, financially, is part of a financially successful holiday letting business and the units have won a number of design awards. Turning now in summary to the officer's report of handling, the proposed extension of an established viable holiday letting business is assessed as being generally supported by local development plan policy ED4C. The contemporary design and materials and recessive colour of the unit would reflect the existing holiday boathouses. It is considered that, as a low-density development, it could be successfully integrated into the landscape. The site lies within an area of ancient woodland and the Woodland Trust has objected to the development. The proposal is seen as acceptable as it did not require the felling of trees and the impact on the habitat is viewed as negligible. 
The site also lies within the River Tay Special Area of Conservation. The proposal requires to be a com <coughs> excuse me. The proposal requires to be a accommodated by a construction method, accompanied by your pardon, by a construction method statement. The statement submitted is seen as lacking sufficient detail. However, SNH would not object to the proposal provided a more detailed statement is secured through any consent that may be granted. The officer also finds that acceptable. The existing holiday units were granted permission subject to the finished floor level being at 110.3 AOD. The proposal would be at the same level. The Council's Structures and Flooding Officer finds this acceptable. However, although aware of the finished floor level proposed, SEPA has objected to this proposal in principle because the development would be located within a floodplain due to its position over the floor shore. Specific reference is made to paragraph 263 of Scottish Planning Policy, which states, and I quote, elevated buildings on structures such as stilts are unlikely to be acceptable. SEPA, as a statutory consultee, <coughs> excuse me, has a therefore objected to the proposal. As such, any intention to grant permission contrary to such an objection requires the proposal to be referred to Scottish ministers. The prospective benefit of, to the economy locally is not considered to outweigh the objection from SEPA. Access and drainage provision is seen as being acceptable. In this case, as mentioned previously, there has been one representation, an objection from the Woodland Trust concerning the impact of the development on an area of ancient woodland. In this case, the applicant has requested a site visit and has suggested that it ought to be accompanied uh, and possibly would be willing to provide a 4x4 vehicle in order to secure access to the site. There is no request for a hearing. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Um, can I ask uh, members if there's any questions for officers on the application that's in front of us? I have no questions, convener. Just, <clears throat> just one, please. Uh, just for clarification, um, I, I know it's in a, a site of ancient woodland, but uh, am I right in um, thinking that no trees are to be cut down for this? Um, <clears throat> well, if you look at the site plan on page, I think it's page 20. On page 20, you have two plans there, the lower one uh, showing the existing and the upper one showing proposed, and you'll see there is no difference indicated there in terms of any additional trees uh, being taken down in association with the development. Does that clarify the matter? Oh, thank oh, thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor James. Um, one question uh, I would like to uh, ask is um, uh, there's evidence of trees being taken down within the area. Um, has there been any uh, uh, either natural regeneration or re replanting uh, to um, uh, supplement the uh, extraction of trees? Um, yes, uh, well, as I say, the photographs show a number of trees have been removed within this, this area. Um, th there's certainly no indication of any planting in terms of um, tubes or anything like that, which would suggest that that would be the case. The, uh, in terms of regeneration, um, I, I, didn't, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see anything specifically, uh, as it were, as a result of the gap being created. My, my impression was that the trees had probably been taken down relatively recently in the sense that, if I can just go back for a moment, um, oops. Um, there didn't seem to be much in the way of, shall we say, secondary growth from the, the stools of the of the trees. So, uh, that, but that I can only read into what I, what I see in the photographs. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Members, can we proceed to determine um, the 
application for the review based on the information that was before us. That is information contained within the pa papers and presentation by the planning officer. I believe I have enough information, Convener. Yep, me too, Convener. Uh, then we can uh, proceed to the review. Um, Councillor McCall, do you want to start on this one? Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, for me, this is actually quite a, a simple process. Does the information provided by the applicant overturn the decision in the report of handling and the issue raised within the Scottish Planning Policy 2014, paragraph 263, regarding buildings on stilts? I've read the papers and I've listened to the information that has been put forward to us today, and in my opinion, I do not believe that the additional information is sufficient due to CEPRA's continued opposition, and I believe that the position to refuse should stand. Thank you. Um, Councillor James, would you like to... Um, I'm coming from the opposite angle to um, Councillor um, oh, McCall. <laughs> Couldn't think of your name then, Ross. <laughs> Having a bad day. Um, I, I agree that you, that CEPA are, are putting in uh, an objection on the on the grounds of um, flooding, and that it is unlikely to be acceptable. I, I know this wording has to be put into documentation, so they're not seen. But I. I I don't like the use of the word unlikely, and it does give people false false hope. I think that if there's a chance that it is acceptable, then um, the applicant should be given that chance. The other thing which I think um, was a concern of mine initially was the uh, ancient woodland. Uh, and as uh, we can see, there's, no, there's going to be no felling of any trees and, and uh, negligible impact. Um, I don't see that the, the um, objection from the Woodland Trust um, holds that much weight. Uh, although I wouldn't like to see any ancient woodland uh, destroyed, and if we were minded to grant this, I'd like to see some protection or, or some condition to pro you know, uh, protect what is there. Um, I, I'd be likely to, to grant this, uh, and as I'm, I'm not keen on the word unlikely. Thank you, Councillor James. Yeah, my first <laughs> convenership and I've got to <laughs> make the decision by the looks of things. Well, uh, can I start off by saying Perth and Kinloch Council have always supported tourist enterprise and we can see the benefits in the areas of, of tourist enterprise. Uh, however, we have got to take into consideration uh, that uh, uh, organisations like SEPA, if they, they have concerns around uh, planning, um, we must give consideration uh, to these things and therefore um, I would uh, uphold the officer's decision to um, um, uh, not allow this uh, uh, development to, uh, to go, any, uh, go ahead. Um, I, I do recognise that the first boat houses were loaded as low density uh, lodges uh, but to have another one in the, the location may put in question whether the description of low-density, low-profile still applies. There's also clear evidence of felling gives me concerns as well. One would expect to see either replanting in this area or evidence of regeneration system uh, that one can see in other areas uh, close to this development. Um, from pictures taken from across the, the, the loch, the, the clearing appears to have been engineered. That's in my view. I think we have to take a recognition of the Woodland Trust. Um, and I think this development would minimise bi biodiversity through fragmentation and loss of woodland due to development. And the policy for that is NE2A, uh, parts A, B, D and E. Uh, so therefore, um, um, it's, uh, I'm afraid it's not the decision that you guys came all this way to here, but the decision two to one is that uh, this development has been, uh, it's not to go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fogg, do you want to? Yeah, I wonder. Could get clarification there. As I saw your position, you were accepting the appointed officer's reason for refusal, but also founding separately 
on uh, biodiversity policy of the um, of the plan too. Um, I wasn't sure, or I'm unclear whether you have support in that from Councillor uh, Ros McCall too, as a separate reason for refusal, or whether you have, uh, or you both have different reasons for refusal, which I think is competent. Um, yeah, I, I, I very much looked at this from from the position of was the evidence based on on the, on the flooding, and um, uh, so um, um, that's that's my reason for okay. refusal. Right. I, I, yeah, I, I think. My, my, my view is that you're allowed to uh, alight on um, that you don't have to have the same reasons for refusal. Um, both of you are refusing the application, but it would be minuted that Councillor Anderson uh, is refusing it for the two reasons and you for one only, uh, and that Councillor James was otherwise minded to uh, uphold the review application. And that is my reading of the, the case, yeah. if that's uh, competent. Um, yeah. uh, Mr Fogg? Uh, thank you very much, everyone. That's the business of the day concluded. It's been quite a quick one. Um, somebody must have been decided to give me an easy run, saying it's my first one. So thank you all very much for attending. <laughs> and we'll see you the next, there'll be more to come next time. Thank you.